On this episode, admittedly, I'm all over the place. We're talking about all sorts of stuff. I'm going to tell you some stories about when I when I first started to make some changes in my career that that brought me into the world of content marketing, where I started to attract clients to me rather than trying to chase them down like my mentor was doing. I'm going to tell you about the new feature that Instagram has called Reels that is uh, – some people are calling a TikTok killer. I don't think it's a killer. It's just a it, it's very very TikTok like, and time will tell if it if it actually wins. Um, remember, IGTV was supposed to be a YouTube killer. That didn't happen. They're just both awesome, um, and a bunch of other stuff. So stay tuned. This is a good one. The Massive Agent Podcast. We lead generation tips and strategies to get you more leads and sell more homes. I love to buy houses. I like to sell houses. It takes brass balls to sell real estate. Wait a minute. The leads are weak. You are weak. I've had better. better. Oh, have I got your attention now? Here's your host, Dustin Brome. What is up, guys? Welcome to episode one. Oh, my God. I don't even know what episode it is. Let's see. 137? I think it's 137 of the Massive Agent Podcast. How's it going? If you can't tell already, I am so unprepared for this week's show. So unprepared. And it's not that I didn't – I mean I've been doing this 137 straight weeks. But uh, – and here's what I kind of wanted to talk about first. Sometimes you just don't feel like doing the things that you know you need to do. Like so, something that you – that could be such a habit. This podcast is such a habit of mine and it's such a top priority. But sometimes – I just like I'm not feeling it or I, I'm not feeling as inspired as I usually am to do it or I just don't know what the hell I want to talk about. Well, this is one of those weeks. So you're hearing this um, about 12 hours after I recorded it, okay? Or, well, maybe a little more. I recorded this the day prior on Wednesday. And uh, so there's a lot going on, but uh, I wanted to talk about Instagram's new Reels feature that I'm playing around with today a little bit. It's really distracting the shit out of me, to be honest with you. But it's interesting because it's not a small thing at all. Um, So that's interesting. A bunch of other stuff. So Welcome to the show. If you guys are new to the Massive Agent Podcast, my name is Dustin Brome, your host. I am a real estate marketing lead gen social media podcasting speaker trainer guy that, that talks uh, that, you know, I speak all over the country at different conferences and stuff when they have them, when COVID is not rearing its its stupid ugly head and ruining conferences and uh in in-person events. Uh, but I am the co-founder of the Industry Syndicate Real Estate's Podcast Network. This show is a proud founding member of the Industry Syndicate Network. I am a realtor in Salt Lake City, Utah with EXP Realty and the co-founder of the Massive Agent Society, our one agent per market lead gen training program. And by the way, if you guys haven't looked at that lately, we have a bunch of new training videos up there or uh, we have a few new ones and a few more to uh, that will be coming. We updated, uploaded our uh, drip campaigns. So if you do not use Wise Agent, uh, like I've been telling you uh, to use Wise Agent and then you can just import my drip campaigns, uh, you can actually copy and paste them if you're a society member and use them yourself. Uh, it's not just about getting the leads, Okay. Even though we we give you the copy and paste Facebook ads to generate leads and it works very well, you know, as long as you maybe tweak a couple things, which which we help you with, and you copy and paste and set up the ads and you start getting leads, that's great. But guys, that is not that's not even the goal. Like the lead is just the start of the process. The goal is to get a closing. The goal from any kind of lead generation, any kind of marketing efforts is to close deals to earn commission or to you know earn revenue have revenue come into your business that is the goal so the lead starts that process it's not the goal now it could be a minor goal like hey i want to get 100 leads this month because then that that'll mean i'll i'll speak with you know 3 to 6 of those people and then next month i'll speak to you know 5 or 6 of more of those 100 and you know eventually those conversations lead to clients, they lead to offers, they lead to transactions. So leads are important, but uh, that's not everything. And there's so many things between getting the lead and getting to closing that need to happen. And a lot of it you control, like how fast you respond to leads, what you say to them, 
how you say it to them, how often you respond to them, how often you follow up with them, how persistent you are with your follow-up, what you say in your follow-up, what platforms to use. Do you send an email, a phone call, a text message, or a freaking snap, or even an Instagram reel? Apparently, you can do that now. What do you do? Well, we have all that in the program as well. So long story short, if you want to become a lead gen master and learn how to not just get leads, but to close deals from those leads over time, because realistically and honestly, it does take some time. You know, you could get a lead today and they could be ready to make an offer. That happens. I see it happen. It will happen, but it's not the norm. Uh, But if you want to control your ability to get new leads, you have to learn to do it yourself. And we have the program to do it to fast track your learning. Go to massiveagentsociety.com right now and check out our program. We only have availability for one agent per market. So go and check out the available markets on our sold out map. And if yours is available, I highly recommend at a minimum, you look at the annual membership, which ends up being 166 per month, which is stupid. Like that's really stupid. And now that I'm hearing it out loud, I'm an idiot as a, as a business owner to be pricing at that low for many, many reasons, but it's great for you. So go check that out. And even a lifetime membership where you can claim your market forever for under $3,000 forever. One-time payment, under $3,000, um, crazy. So, and then you get access to all the future programs I'm coming out with. And by the way, guys, a little spoiler alert, I am working on something right now that is not even lead gen related, it is social media related uh, to help you guys who are like, what do I post and how should I do it? And how should I word it? Like, just tell me what to post and I'll do it. <clears throat> got something for you. I've got something for you that is in development. It's coming out within the next month or so, definitely by the end of September, uh, possibly by the end of August. We'll see. But I'm, I'm anticipating first part of September to, uh, to have some info for you. So next week, I'll give you a URL where you can get on the waiting list for this. But right now, I'm just going to tease it because I'm, I'm a jerk like that. Uh, but if you guys are also wondering like, oh, geez, um, wow, like social media, I hear it's great, but what do I do? Well, I've got something for you. You guys are going to love it. You just take the cues day by day, paste, uh, sometimes copy and paste, sometimes click to post. And man, it's going to be awesome. I'm I'm super excited. Anyhow, guys. All right. Uh, So today I want to talk about um, Instagram reels. So I just got that today in my camera. So it didn't come as a separate app. Um, like Instagram, uh, when they came out with IGTV, it was a, it was a separate app. I think they learned the hard way through IGTV. Don't make it a separate app. Just do it all within Instagram makes it easy. But reels is a new feature within Instagram stories. And it's just like TikTok, very, very similar to TikTok. It functions in a lot of the same ways. The biggest difference is the algorithm. So TikTok's algorithm is totally different than than Instagram's. And there's so much upside and potential discoverability on TikTok. Now, I haven't figured it out, but I have had like 13 or 14,000 views on some videos where it's like my my three-year-old, my two-year-old daughter, I don't even know how old my daughter is. That's weird. My two-year-old daughter um, scooping uh, pasta with, with the foot of her Barbie doll and eating it and, you know, 13, 14,000 views, TikTok's crazy. So I don't know how, uh, how Instagram's algorithm will compare to TikTok's. I don't know if, if reels is going to be like a replacement for TikTok. I have no idea, but if you're an Instagram user, basically what just happened is they gave you another tool. Instagram is giving you another way of creating content. And, and so that may work for you. It may not, you may like it. You may not. I don't even know if I like it yet. I think I will um, because I'm I'm not a not a huge TikToker. I'm not even a TikToker. I've just done a few of them, but I like Instagram stories a lot. And now we have more options uh, within our stories and it's called Instagram Reels. So go check it out. I've been playing with it today. Uh, The jury is still out for me, but that just popped up today. So you guys probably have that as you're listening to this. Check your camera. Uh, within Instagram stories. And I bet reels is in there and start playing around with it. Kind of interesting. So, uh, but the whole goal with the reason why I'm even bringing up this new feature is the game that matters as a realtor is do people know who you are? 
Do people in your community, in the market that you work, do they know who you are or not? And if not, that's a problem. This is why, so this is where technology is going to put a lot of realtors out of business. A lot of the mediocre or bad realtors, I mean, hopefully the ones that are like screwing over consumers and really like not doing a good job for their clients, hopefully they go out of business so they can stop hurting people. But but even you guys like who just don't do the things, uh, you don't take advantage of the technology that's out there or you don't use social media um, or, or you don't use it the right way. And again, I've got something for you guys that are like, I look, Dustin, you, I know I need to use social media, but I don't know how I've got your back. Stay tuned in the next, in the next week or so. Um, but it, if you're not doing those things, I promise you a, t- a time will come very soon, maybe in, in the next six to nine months where you just don't exist. Okay. People go to when they're looking for a realtor, they get a referral from their family or they go online and start looking at Yelp or Facebook groups or Google and they're going to find – you know, they only find people who have a good presence. Now, if you are referred to someone, if you're an agent and you get referred to somebody, uh, that's awesome. But what is that person going to do? They don't know you. They're just like, oh, thank you, cousin, cousin Tim, for the referral for Johnny the realtor. Uh, I don't know Johnny, so let me look him up. They go Google your name. They find nothing. Maybe they find a Facebook page. Hopefully you have a freaking Facebook page, but they don't find a page or they, they, all they see is a, a LinkedIn profile or like nothing really. They're like, Ugh. guys, people have so many choices. Consumers have so many choices of agents and, and they know okay? it's not just it's not just entrepreneurs who are becoming more savvy with technology and social media. So are consumers and the expectations that they have. So if you don't show up in a Google search, if you don't show up when they're looking on social media or or when they look you up, it's just like very minimal and there's nothing, they're not going to hire you to sell their house. They're not going to they're not going to bring you into their house to have you sit there and tell them that you are the best marketer to help them sell their house, that you know how to get them the most exposure for their home. Really? You're going to sit there and tell a seller that? Well, any good seller most of them, they're going to, they're going to, uh, fact check you, if you will, you know, they're going to fact check you. They're going to look you up and they're going to be like, how's this guy going to get me more exposure? He doesn't even like, they they don't even know how to get themselves more exposure. This is a big deal. So if you're not using the tools available to you, such as social media, if you're not creating content, which can be found online and shared and discovered, then at some point you don't exist. This, this is – it's becoming life or death as far as business goes. Will you be around a year from now or not? COVID-19 um, it, COVID nineteen has been so crazy because what it's done uh, – well, it's done many things. First off, it's, it's made a lot of us gain the COVID-19 with all of the frozen foods and the lack of exercise that we – you know, that February, March, and April. You know what I'm talking about if you've gained the COVID-19 like the rest of us. But – Besides the COVID-19, uh, one thing it's done is it's sped up trends that were already happening. Okay, Going virtual, going digital, going paperless, that was already happening. But so many of us, well, no, no, so many of you just were dragging your feet on that because you're like, well, I'm too busy to, you know, to implement this or I'm too busy to use e-signatures or I'm too busy for this, that, or the other. Uh, but guess what? Now you have to because of COVID, you had to go virtual or you just couldn't get things done. So it sped up those trends. It also sped up the trends of consumers wanting Zoom call meetings rather than in-person meetings in some places. Now, I know in a lot of parts of the country, a lot of, a lot of people are just over it and they're like, screw you. I'm not doing a Zoom call. Let's go meet for coffee and we'll just sit six feet apart. Okay. So that's still happening. I know. Um, fantastic. But uh there's a lot more people who are willing to meet virtually. Okay. So if you're, if you can't do that, if you don't know how to do a zoom call, if you don't know how to FaceTime, or if you don't come across well on them, you're hurting your chances of getting business. So you, you've got to understand what consumers are expecting as well. COVID-19 has been such a great thing for so many businesses and such a a huge disaster for so many other businesses. And, 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 
it's really crazy to watch in our industry, especially I've seen agents who have gone out of business already. A lot of it was out of fear, to be honest with you, is or they told themselves the story that, oh my God, the economy is going to collapse or I'm not going to be, you know, nobody's buying or nobody's selling, which is interesting because every market that I see out there is literally the hottest it's been ever. Like we're seeing record hot markets pretty much everywhere across the board. It's crazy. In Salt Lake City, where I'm at, there's such an insanely hot seller's market that you just can't find enough homes to sell. Like buyer's agents are are going around door to door begging for people to list their houses, you know, and and not just, and and that's not just a ploy. Like they're, they really need somebody to to list their house. Otherwise they can't help their buyer find, uh, they can't help their buyer buy one. So it's just, it's just crazy. But COVID-19 has also uh, just, it's made it more important to be seen online. Video is one of those things you can do to be seen online, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Facebook. You can embed videos in a blog post on your website or even on the front page of your website. Uh, you could. There's so many things you could do with video. Uh, video, just through social media, you could be found through hashtags if you're using local hashtags in the content that you do or if you are collaborating or doing interviews with other local business owners or local uh, personalities, tagging them in your content so that their network sees it. Uh, that's, that's a great way for you to get discovered. But if you don't have something on uh, something that can be searched, that is searchable, you guys are in trouble. Um, whether that's a website that has some text and stuff that, that can be that Google indexes. Uh, so if people search homes for sale in Salt Lake City, do they find you? You know, are, are you showing up or moving to Salt Lake City? Are they finding a video you did? Are they finding an article that you did? Are they finding uh, something? You know, uh, it's, it's just so important that you guys are getting yourself out there. And I, and to be honest, I don't think that it's a, that I really have to convince you guys of doing it. I think a lot of it is what do I do? You know, you're like, okay, cool. But where do I start? So I'm going to tell you a little story of how I started down this road. And if you've been listening for a while, you may have, you may have heard this story, but I'll probably share some more details that maybe you haven't heard that, that might uh, resonate with you or be, be a little bit interesting. But uh, okay, so I've been an agent for almost 10 years now, about nine and a half years. The first four-ish years, I'm, I'm really bad on you know time and when, when stuff happened. But about halfway through my career, I was, just, I was struggling like... I just wasn't selling many homes or I certainly wasn't having success. Like sometimes I was barely selling enough homes just to get by, let alone to like catch up on some bills or like put some money aside and actually like go on vacation and enjoy really weird. Just wasn't doing well. And it was because I was following a roadmap that was given to me by somebody else, but I was following their roadmap. I was doing what worked for them because when I got into real estate, guys, I was not the person that I am today. Like I'm, I look back at who I was even a year, two years ago, and it blows my mind at the, at the progress I've made. Um, I've, I've changed. And I mean, that's been intentional. You know, I've worked on it. I've been, I've been trying to do that and surrounding myself with, with people that I think are smarter and better and and more successful than me. So it's been intentional, but it's crazy how it just happens incrementally. Uh, But when I got into real estate, I was, I didn't have a clue. I really thought that the way my mentor was, uh, was prospecting, I thought that that's what agents did. Cold calls with a script pinned to the wall and your freaking headset on going through the script. Um, and you'd, you know, you'd buy phone numbers from Red X or what was the other one? Um, bah, 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 bah. There's a couple others. Espr- I, th- I think Espresso agent was one that you can buy phone numbers and contact info. But that's what they did. And they wore their name tag everywhere they went. And they would try to talk to people at Starbucks or the grocery, uh, the grocery store in the checkout line or in the produce section. And they would just try to talk to people about real estate. And it was all, oh, and door knocking, by the way, it was, it was all uh, chasing. It was all like, hey, I'm going to come find you and try to convince you to work with me type of thing. And again, I was following their roadmap. Well, if you're following somebody else's roadmap, that's not good. That's not good. 
Because in real estate, something that I've learned over these almost 10 years, there's a million different ways to be successful. There is no one right way. There is no one right path that you have to follow. You could be successful in what, first off, whatever success means to you, your definition of success is going to be different than mine. And, and that's totally fine. That is awesome. Uh, so you could do whatever you want. You could, uh, just, you could grow a huge team and work you know, two hours a week and have a hundred other people selling homes for you. And then you just make a little piece off of those. Cool. Or you could do it all yourself and keep every dime of your commission that you want. Cool. You can start your own brokerage. You can start your own team. You could become a coach, become a trainer, become a speaker. Um, you know, there's so many different things you can do. You could become an investor. You could, uh, put together syndication deals. You could be a wholesaler. You freaking name it. But I didn't know any of that. So I thought there was one right way to be an agent. And it wasn't until out of necessity that I was I was just like, I, I can't make ends meet. Like I've got to turn this thing around. And I was prompted to just Google how to get real estate leads. And it brought me to a blog by Easy Agent Pro, the website company. They were doing a great job of content marketing themselves. But it, they had articles like, you know, use these 10, 10 tips to get leads today or, you know, print out this sign and put it on your laptop at Starbucks or, you know, like just random stuff like that. Uh, Some of them individually were like, well, that's lame, but they were throwing out so many different ideas for agents to use. And, and I started to notice that there was this whole other way that agents could get business and that's to attract business to them. And so I, through their blogs, uh, I started learning about attraction marketing and, and I literally found a, an article about content marketing itself and, and why it works so well that you create content, meaning video, a podcast, an article, um, photos, whatever it is, it could be entertaining. It could be educational. It could be comedy, whatever. Uh, but you put out some sort of content that, that people find and then they are attracted to you and then they call you and hire you uh, based off of what they found on their own when you don't even know that it's happening. When I first heard about that, I'm like, holy crap. Like, first off, I didn't even realize that that's – there's been so many successful companies and brands that had been doing that to me my whole life and have been doing that to you too. We just didn't realize it. But it was the first time that I was conscious of it and I was like, holy crap. Wow, I could actually use that for – me as, as a realtor here in Salt Lake City. So I don't have to chase people down. I don't have to convince them. I don't have to keep doing these freaking cold calls and door knocking and uh, like all this stuff that I hated that was just draining the life out of me. I'm like, wait, if I can do some content, if I can write some articles, people will call me and hire me. And it was totally just revolutionary to me, totally revolutionary. So, uh, but you know, like a lot of you guys, you're like, okay, cool. That's a great idea. But how, how the hell do you do that? First thing, well, two things I did. I found uh, what I needed, which tools, which platform. So I decided I'm going to start blogging. That's where I'm going to start with my content is writing articles so people can find them through Google searches and then come to my site and hire me. Um, So I did my research and I found out Easy Agent Pro was going to be the best for me. I tried the cheap route first for 40 bucks a month, some absolute garbage website company based out of Utah called Pro Agent Websites, where their owner literally told me that there is no SEO value in blogging, which is very interesting. It's complete bullshit, but very, very interesting and uh, just mind boggling. So I learned what cheap is. Then Easy Agent Pro, who I thought was expensive at the time, they were only like, what, 149 a month? I think they were 150 a month at the time. But you needed five hundred dollars in addition as a startup fee at the time, so it was like what six fifty, and to me that was extremely expensive. So I found that, and I'm like, I need this. If I can just get this, this will help me. So then I found some mentors. So it's not just getting the tools and the platforms to do it, but um, I needed some people who were already doing what I thought could be done, and I needed to just do what they were doing because one thing that I've learned is you do not need to recreate the wheel in anything. You don't need to recreate the wheel unless like you're a scientist or Elon Musk and you're, you're like you're inventing, but we're not inventing. 
You don't need to invent anything. You just need people to see you and hire you. Okay, that's, that's, not, that's not rocket science, literally. So I found this group of mentors who, uh, this, these real estate bloggers on Google Plus of all places, Google Plus. And I just kind of watched how they were doing things and I reached out to a few of them and they were all super cool and they were willing to help and they were like, hey, you need this and you need this and you need to learn this. And so um, I decided I'm gonna borrow some money. I had to borrow 650 bucks to start my Easy Agent Pro website. And luckily they... Well, this is one of the reasons I went with them. They had such great support and training that they kind of helped me get started. They, they helped point me in the right direction. They're like, here's the tools you need. Here's how to use them. Now you just use them, put the content on there and publish, and then you know we'll help you along the way. And they did. And it was fantastic. And so I, the hardest part was starting. Starting is literally the hardest part because there's so many thoughts of, well, I, I, I need to learn how to do it right. I need to make this perfect. Like I've got to have everything dialed in first. I have learned through experience that that is absolutely incorrect in my opinion. It's so much better to ready, fire, aim than ready, aim, fire. If you, if you don't ever start, if you don't ever launch that website or if you don't ever write the first draft of an article, if you don't start doing some video and do a few takes, if you don't start podcasting, how can you improve on it? How can you ever make something better if that something doesn't even freaking exist, right? It has to exist first. The only way that you learn how to drive is you get behind the wheel and and when I learned to drive, uh, we had stick shift, you know? I, I don't even think kids these days understand stick shift. Lucky them because stiff, I mean... Shift, geez, I can't even say it. Stick shift kind of sucks. It, it kind of sucks, even though I had two or three different cars with a stick shift. That's what I was learning on. And so what do you do? You get behind the wheel and it's not like, you, you're like, okay, I've been studying for so long, I'm gonna get this right. Well, now there's a big difference between theory and actually doing. So you get behind the wheel and that sucker jerks all over the place and the, and the car dies, right? So you gotta start it again, you know, and then you get a little better and you get a little better. But you have to start. With everything we've ever learned in our lives, you have to start and then practice and do a little better and do it a little better and do it a little better. So that's what I did. I started writing and then I started figuring out how can I make it better? How can I word this better? How can I make the topics better? Uh, by the way, guys, if you pick the right topics, it, it could be written horribly. But if it's an interesting topic people want, it's going to do well. The topic is key. The topic is absolutely key with videos, with articles, with anything. So then I started getting feedback from these mentors and, uh, and tweaking little things along the way. And, and I started getting traction and two or three months after I, I've been publishing articles, I had a buyer find a YouTube video that I put up. Then they went to my website and read some stuff and, and they called me out of the blue. And I even remember I was in the car when I got this call and they were like, hey, uh, we, we actually just found you through, through Google and then on your website and we need to buy a house and you're our guy. Those were their exact words. You're our guy. And I was like, oh, wow. My first thought was, so how many other people am I going up against? Like how many other agents do I have to compete against? And they're like, yeah, can we meet so you can kind of tell us what you need from us to get started? And I'm like, wait, that's not – they wouldn't be asking me that if this was like an interview. I was like, holy shit. So I'm like, uh, how about like like right now at Starbucks? I don't think it was right then, but uh, pretty soon we met at Starbucks and I and, and it was amazing, okay? Uh, they became friends. It was awesome. But they validated everything uh, fairly quickly. You know, if you get payoff like that within three months of starting a content marketing strategy, that's awesome. It usually takes a bit longer. But that validated everything and I knew that if I could just continue doing more content and making it better and almost even more important than the quality of the content is how many people can you get to see the content. So I started learning how to run Facebook ads and how to use social media the right way to to get, excuse me, to get people to share the content that you've just done. Uh, how do you do that? How can you how can you get other people to want to share it by featuring them by doing lists, right? Like the ten best coffee shops in in Holiday, Utah, and you tag all of them in the social media post, uh, and you link back to their their websites from your article, and you email all of them and say, "Hey, congratulations! You were just featured on this list, right?" And then what do they do? 
They share it because you've made it easy and you say, here's a link, here's a link for you to share. And you, so you make it like, here, share this, you know, you have to tell them what to do. But that's, I started learning that stuff and it, it, it just exploded. So fast forward, you know, uh, doing that just kept getting better, kept getting better, kept getting more exposure, kept getting more traffic to my website, got better with social media, started learning Facebook ads. And, uh, I was doing all this myself. And another little lesson here, hire a damn coach, hire, if you want to do a certain thing, hire someone who already does it at a very high level so they can speed it up for you so that they can just like give you this, the cliffs notes and get you up to speed quickly based off their experience, not off your experience, which is none. So that's something that I really screwed up on is I quote unquote, couldn't afford a coach. I couldn't afford taking a course, but I could have borrowed the money or something, right? I could have figured it out. It, it's a silver line. It, like it, it's a double-edged sword because I, by doing everything myself, uh, it forced me to have a, a very broad knowledge of things, which is great. That, that has been helpful, but it made it so much the time that it took to actually see success and to start making money and closing deals took so much longer and actually cost a lot more money in with Facebook ads in particular, because I was learning by doing, I was learning through trial and error and I was wasting a lot of money on Facebook ads that had I just hired somebody or taken a course or had someone who knew what they were doing, say here, copy this and and paste this, uh, that would have saved me thousands of dollars and months and months and months of time. So th- that's one thing. Guys, speed it up, okay? Speed it up. Learn it for yourself, but speed up uh, what you're learning and just follow the roadmap from someone who's already done it. Uh, but I have I got to a point where I was closing about 80% of my deals from my online efforts, social media, my website, uh, and the other 20% from Sphere of Influence. Then when I decided to start teaching other agents and talking to other agents, which for me, it was through Snapchat. And I did a whole episode on how Snapchat changed my life um, in a previous episode months ago. So go listen to that if that sounds interesting to you. But uh, through that, I started to build an audience of other agents. Well, what, and I was just teaching them and showing them what I had done to, you know, to, to build my business which I had just done. Like I I had just come out of it. It's not like I'd been doing it for 20 years, but I had just come out of it. So it was fresh in my mind and I knew it was working because it was working right then and there. And I just started sharing it and I started building an audience of other agents. Well, this podcast exists because I wanted a way to talk to more agents in a scalable way. Uh, You know, this podcast, I I record one time and I could have two people listen or 20,000. And, and it's just so scalable. So this podcast was a great way to build the audience. What happened is I started because I, uh, through the snap pack real estate marketing group on Facebook, uh, Facebook group and my Snapchat account, which Inman wrote about, and I got profiled in Inman and they included my, my, uh, snap code and stuff. So I got a bunch of real estate agent followers, but then the podcast, once I launched this back in uh, January, 2018, I had all these agents who now knew me as the Salt Lake City agent. So I started getting a lot of referrals from uh, from other agents. So I went down to closing about 70% of my deals from um, from my online marketing efforts and, and 25 to 30% from referrals was amazing. So the moral of the story here, guys, is I learned how to get people to know that I exist by using the tools available to me. At the time, I was using Google+. Plus. I was using Google Plus. I was using a website. I was using um, all sorts of other little like tools or websites and stuff that aren't even around anymore. And uh, I wasn't using Instagram at all. Um, it was Facebook. It was Pinterest. It was Google Plus and Twitter just because I dump dump a bunch of stuff on Twitter because nobody gives a shit on Twitter. And it's just amazing. When people know who you are or you are discoverable, you're going to do well. And the more you can get people to see you, the more people you can get to see you, I should say, the more success you're going to have. That is the game. That is the game. Last week's episode, episode one, I I should probably check this real quick. Yeah, yeah, 137. Good. I'm glad I'm right so I don't have to redo the intro and all that shit. 
Um, where the hell was I going with that? I don't know. Oh, on last week's episode with Alec Hansen, we were talking about video. What I hope you guys gathered is that he just started. He just took his phone. He started talking to his phone while recording. And he he spoke authentically and with passion about whatever the hell he wanted to talk about. He took that video and he uploaded it to LinkedIn. He uploaded it to Facebook. And, and, you know, then he learned a couple um, editing things where, you know, you can put your name or or it's called the lower third, you know, like the name, the title of the person and all that uh, down across the bottom of the video. Like if if somebody's being featured in the video, there's so many apps that do that stuff, uh, but he learned how to do that. And now he just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And now he's known as a video influencer within the industry within like a matter of six to eight months. It's crazy. That can happen to you at a local level. I st- one of the things I started doing after I had my blog going and everything like that is I thought I'm going to do a local video show. And so I called it Salt Lake Insider. And I just took my iPhone and then I took a little $40 podcasting mic called the Samson Go Mic. I don't recommend you go get this unless um, well, I don't use it for podcasting. It, to me, it's not a sufficient podcasting mic. But so here's how I used it. I bought I had my iPhone. I had the Samson Go Mic. Um, this little teeny mic thing. And, and then I bought an adapter so I could plug that USB mic into my iPhone. And, and that mic could be the audio to go into the video that my iPhone was recording. And then I would just go sit down next to people, put the microphone between us clipped to a chair and interview them. And so I did some of these interview shows, put them up on YouTube, put them up on Facebook, tagged the business or and or the people that I was interviewing. And, you know, I'd get tens of thousands of views. I got business from it. And not to mention the business, but the people that I met, the relationships that I made, it was it was networking. It's so cool. And I still stay in touch with some of those people that I interviewed even today. And, and it's awesome. Like I got in good with uh, with some of the uh, marketing department people over at Top Golf, and you know that led to some really cool stuff that you've heard me talk about in previous shows. Um, just all because I decided to start recording myself talking on video and putting it on social media. What matters the most is if you're wondering, well, how do I do that, guys? If you're still stuck on how, I just freaking told you how. Turn. Click record on your video on your phone, turn it around and point it at you and start talking about something interesting. When you're done talking about something interesting, click stop, upload to Facebook, upload to LinkedIn, upload wherever the hell. The key is to talk about something interesting. Okay. So whatever that is in your local area, go, go interview a high school principal about what the, what the next school year is going to be like. What, what, what are, what are high school sports going to be like this next year? You know, go interview them about that. And if you can't meet it, meet in person, do it through zoom and just record the zoom and export the video there. Like it's so, it really is so easy. We're overthinking it guys. You don't need these big, fancy, expensive mics. You don't need big, fancy, expensive cameras. You don't need all this crazy editing software. You don't need to hire a videographer. You really don't. I mean, you want to get to that point. Absolutely. But just start. Please start doing the things that are going to get you exposure and get you found online. Because if you're not found online, you literally don't exist. I want every single one of you listening, not just to survive, but to thrive these next few years, which are going to be crazy. There's so much market share that can be taken. There's so much opportunity. You know, you've heard me talk about the different choices I've made and how I've structured my business. There's a reason why I'm partnering with agents around the country and, you know, through my brokerage, there's a a big reason why there's a reason why I'm doing um, some info products, Uh, you know, the massive agent society coaching program. There's a reason why I speak. There's a reason why I was a co-founder in the industry syndicate podcast network and why we're, um, (laughs) there's some really cool stuff going on there with, uh, man, it's amazing when when an advertiser can know that 100% of the people hearing their ad are a certain profession, that gets interesting for the advertiser, doesn't it? Anyhow, um, if you guys don't exist online, you just don't exist. You just don't. Um, I've been fortunate enough to to train myself to to be an action taker. 
I was not an action taker at all. I was an overthinker. I was an overanalyzer and I wouldn't do shit until out of necessity, I just started doing things and started learning how to do them better along the way. That's it. That's it. And since then, every now I do things and figure it out. It, that's become habit. I've created a habit of doing rather than overanalyzing and not doing. It's It's been one of the greatest blessings of my life that I did out of desperation. And then I just kept doing it. So if there's anything that I've been very good at, it's just that I take action and I do. And I do it consistently and I try to make it better every time. I hope that somehow that story helps you, um, inspires you, uh, or at a minimum. I mean, here's what I'm hoping is that you hear you hear me today not having any clue what I was even going to talk about today, not having any real notes and just um, stammering through this and realizing, wow, if that Dustin guy can, can be successful in this industry, I sure as hell can. If you're thinking that right now, you're right. And I'm so glad that you're thinking that because that's what I want. I want you to realize like I'm nothing special. I'm not, I'm not this amazing, like super smart, freaking like born into a, you know, a, a wealthy, successful family. Like, you know, I, I'm none of that. I'm not, I've just gotten good at things by doing it over and over and over and doing, doing them authentically my way. That's it. That's it. And, uh, I, I, I want that for you. I really want you guys to get to the point where you just start taking action and figure it out along the way. If you do, you're going to do well. There's so many things you can do in this industry, whether you want to, um, start your own brokerage, whether you want to just sell 500 homes a year all by yourself without a transaction coordinator because you're a freaking psycho. You can do that if you want. If you want to build a team, that's awesome. If you want to just partner with with other agents and help them and support a a big team of agents um, you know, through an EXP Realty or some of the other business models out there that let you do that, which there really aren't any, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, I guess there's a couple that you could, um, you know, that's cool too. Um, that's something I've chosen to do. It's, uh, you could become an investor. You could become, uh, like Tarek El Musa on the episode we did with him. He became an HGTV reality star. And now he has all these different shows, all these different companies. He has about a hundred different rental properties. He flipped, he's flipped thousands of homes, um, all because he started as an agent and he, he pitched the idea for a show thinking that would help him to sell more homes as an agent. This industry can let you do anything. You just need to know what you want to do. Do you want more time freedom? Do you want the flexibility if you want to go pick your kid up from, from first grade and take them to lunch at the drop of a hat? Can you do that with your current situation with the brokerage you're with or how you set your business up? Can you do that? Some of you can. I know a lot of you can't because your team or your brokerage says you've got to be in the office 15 hours a week and you've got to be making calls two hours a day and you've got to have floor time and all this shit and they charge you a bunch of fees. That That's all dead, guys. You may not realize it yet, but that's dead. That's been dead for years. You don't need to do that anymore. Let's talk if you're in that situation because if, if you can't if you can't just like say, I'm going to go to lunch now, that's a problem. Uh, one of the best things about this industry is – flexibility and being able to be your own boss. And if you're not your own boss or you're, you're barely your own boss, I'm telling you, there's a better way. There's a, there's a better way. There's many better ways. There's so many different brokerages or situations you could get yourself into that would be an improvement from where you're at. If you feel like an employee or you feel like you just have a job because, uh, that sucks. So I, I hope something I said today helps you guys. I'll be a bit more um, prepared next week. Um, but I, the other thing that I wanted you guys to pick up this week is even though I really didn't want to do this, I just I didn't have a clue what I wanted to talk about today. Um, but I did it anyways because I'll be damned if I miss my 137th straight week of publishing on time every Thursday morning. I'll be damned if I'm going to miss that. So I did it anyways. And next week, I'm going to be back with a vengeance, and it's going to be an interview show, and it's going to be freaking awesome. And in a week or two, we have uh, we have Peter Lorimer. If you guys know Peter Lorimer, he is the host of Netflix's Stay Home, co-host of Stay Home on Netflix. 
He's an amazing real estate broker out of California. He runs PLG Estates. He's hilarious. And uh, I'm super excited to interview him for the show. So that's coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Um, but guys, if you are, if there's anything I can do to help you, if you want to have a chat about um, what you're trying to do in this industry and what the possibilities are for you, um, I'm happy to, to listen. And I, if you'd like me to, I can give you some pointers and suggestions on, on you know, which direction you could go. I'm happy to do that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna guide you into something that isn't uh, what works best for you. Okay. I've there's been a couple people recently that I've told um, to go in an opposite direction, and you know th- they're grateful for it. And it, if I can be helpful in that way, let me know. If there's anything I can do, let me know. Send me a DM on Instagram at Massive Agent, and um, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Uh, Thank you for listening. Thank you for reviewing and rating the show. If you haven't yet, please go to massiveagentpodcast.com slash review. It will take you right to Apple Podcasts where you can subscribe to the show. Definitely do that so you never miss an episode. And also leave us a rating. Just give us a rating. Every time you do, it helps us um, show up a little bit better in the search results for podcasts. Helps us to grow our audience. We want more agents to discover the show and you can help us do that. Thank you guys. Have a great, great, great rest of your week. Take care.